The sinister short story, The Cask of Amontillado, contains a few central themes, namely revenge, folly of pride, and paradox. Acclaimed legend of short Gothic fiction, Edgar Allan Poe explicitly signals that revenge will be the focus of The Cask of Amontillado. Montresor fixates on how he plans to enact revenge against Fortunato. Frankly, it seems like Montresor's entire family is obsessed with it, as well, based on their motto and coat of arms that reinforce this theme. Montresor echoes the idea of the dramatic monologue in poetry and the monologues of Shakespeare's plays, where the villain reveals himself to his audience. And his commitment to revenge is powerful and all-consuming. This is a man who keeps track of how other people insult him and how many times. He plans first to deceive Fortunato and then to kill him. Pride is a central motivation in this story, and foolish pride is one of the themes that affects both main characters throughout. Montresor concludes he must have revenge on Fortunato because of his wounded pride. Fortunato may be full of himself and a bit foolish, but nothing in this story suggests any of the thousand injuries he did to Montresor were intentional. They might not even be real offenses. Instead, they might be Montresor placing value on his pride and his family's legacy of being proud so highly that he takes offense even when none is meant or given. Fortunato's foolish pride is central to this story. Dressed for a party, as a fool, notably, and clearly having plans, he abandons them all in a flash as soon as Montresor mentions asking Lucchese about the wine. His outsized pride continues to motivate him throughout the story. Fortunato is clearly sick. He has an absolutely terrible cough. But instead of protecting his health, he insists on going deeper into the catacombs, spurred on by the folly of drinking carelessly. The carnival season is a time of paradox when the normal social order is turned upside down. And this can take many forms. In Christian cultures where the church preaches sobriety, carnival is a time of revelry where extravagant excess is allowed. In monarchies, subjects must show respect to the king. But during carnival, disrespect is allowed, even encouraged. Some carnival celebrations crown their own temporary kings, and kings played the role of peasant. By setting the story during carnival, Poe establishes the possibility for this sort of inversion to happen, and it does. A friend turns into a killer, a wine cellar into a tomb, and so on. There are also other paradoxes in this story. It's a paradox that Montresor hates Fortunato, but pretends to be his close friend. Also, Montresor is sure his servants aren't home precisely because he ordered them to stay home. Later on, Fortunato refers to the Masons, who are now only metaphorical stonecutters. But in the story, Montresor is a literal Mason, bricking Fortunato ah, ah, into his family crypt, entombing him alive. <laughs> 